Excellent. Welcome back everyone to CES 2017 coverage from Las Vegas, Nevada. Look, there's Kyle. He's hanging out. I'm, I'm being behind the camera for this time, but I of course want to start off by thanking my sponsors for this event, Gigabyte, uh, Toshiba, OCZ, and Decool. Uh, now I'm at EVGA right now, so I'm going to start off by showing you this new case that they have. This is the DG7. Uh, it is sort of the little brother to the DG87 that they came out with last year, uh, and it's sort of a work in progress. They're aiming to launch this uh, around the June time frame, so right around Computex, but it does have a tempered glass side panel on one side. They have a, a system here that's uh, fully kitted out with an actual build in it, and then they also have an empty uh, chassis that we can take a closer look at. Uh, now you have uh, plenty of radiator support. You can actually do up to 360 on the front. On the top, probably going to be limited to more like something like a 240, um, but of course this is still in development. So we never know what they might change around to that kind of thing. I really like the finish on it. It's got sort of a gunmetal gray, a slight bit of texture on the paint job. And then there is a nice uh, shroud down there at the bottom that keeps everything enclosed. And I do like that it's got the little EVGA logo uh, punched out there as well. I thought that was a pretty good, pretty good little, little added bonus there. Uh, top IO, pretty standard USB 3.0, uh, reset power, all that good stuff. Uh, and then the front panel seems just pretty, pretty monolithic, pretty standard. There is like a DG7 sort of logo here on the side, next to the EVGA on the front, as well as the DG7 logo that's kind of up on the top corner near the IO. So we were kind of debating whether or not that those like logos or the, just the model number, like was it whether it was appealing or not. Also, the tempered glass is fairly dark right now, and they did say that they possibly wanted to lighten that up a bit just to give you a bit better a, a look at what's inside. Now, the price point they're aiming for here is about 150 US dollars. Uh, seems pretty reasonable for a high-end case with the tempered glass side panel. They might even think about doing something like putting tempered glass on the opposite side, which, um, I don't know, kind of on the fence about myself. Of course, like with all products in development, they are totally looking for feedback from you guys. So let them know in the comments. What do you think of this case? What do you think it looks like compared to the DG87? And uh, any other ideas for it? Let EVGA know. Next up we have some Z270 boards. I have not looked at any of the EVGA Z270 boards, but they have this awesome new feature, which is that none of them have RGB LEDs on them. That's right. No RGB LED lighting on any of these Z270 motherboards from EVGA. So maybe for some of you guys that's really welcome. Who knows? Uh, but let's start at the bottom. This is the Z270 Stinger Mini ITX. They've done everything I wanted them to do with a new version of the Stinger, uh, which is to make everything all black. Just a couple of red accents on there. They've included Wi-Fi as well as a U.2 as well as, oh, thank God, an M.2 on the back. That's right, so pretty much all those connections that you would want, and it, of course, is gonna support Skylake and KB Lake processors, and uh, IO is pretty decent as well. Uh, they got a USB Type-C down there. Uh, that is a Gen uh, 3.1 Gen 2, as well as plenty of additional USB 3, and uh, looks like a pretty solid board overall. I like the finish. Uh, next up, we have two full-size boards. Uh, the Z270 for the Win K is on the right. That one's going to cost 100. And, uh, I'm sorry, 250 US dollars. So again, the Mini ITX is 200. The full-size ATX for the Win K is 250, and then the classified, which is the highest end over there on the left, is going to be 300. Um, these have a wide array of features, of course, tons of M.2 support. Um, the classified has everything, so it's got like a killer NIC and an Intel NIC, as well as upgraded audio. Uh, the Z270 for the Win K uh, is just a, just slightly more cut down, but um, still going to give you plenty of overclocking support. Um, not quite as beefy of power delivery as you might notice up at the top there, just with an 8-pin and a few less power faces. Uh, but the classified over here uh, looks pretty beastly, so if you are looking for a really nice overclocking board, I'm, I can pretty confidently say, um, just based on past history, that you're, you're probably going to get a pretty good uh, look at it out of this board. Uh, classified also features some of those little bonus stuff that EVGA, do, EVGA does, like the kind of nicer power and reset surface mount of buttons there, uh, right angle 24-pin uh, power connector, and um, a uh, connected uh, heatsink array here between the chipset heatsink and the VRM heatsinks just to make sure you get plenty of heat dissipation for your overclocking needs. Over here we have a wider range of products. Um, these are all part of the QR family, which uh, I believe QR stands for quick release, and basically EVGA has a set of products here, whether you're looking at radiators of different sizes, uh, whether you're talking about a 
a single fan radiator, like 120, or you want a thick 120, or you want a 240, or actually, that, that, I think that's a 280 there, or you want a 360, or you want a two, another 280. Uh, they have special EVGA fans on these. They're specially designed to re reduce turbulence as they are cooling over those radiators, specially designed fin blades, as well as these sort of curves down here, these kind of cupped cutouts, which uh, we're told, again, helps reduce turbulence and uh, helps improve performance. So um, I don't know if that has been scientifically tested or not, but we'll, we'll take their word for it for now. Now, the pumps that are going to be in these units are, uh, well, I should say all of this, all this hardware, uh, EVGA is working with Ace Tech to put together. So here's, for example, a CPU block with a pump in it that you can purchase, and you buy this kind of as its own little individual unit. And then via the quick disconnects, these all come pre-filled, by the way. They all have the fluid already in them. And then the quick disconnects, you can just connect up like a radiator, you know, and then you got a CPU cooling loop. Or get yourself a QRG hybrid graphics card that also has a pump in it. So if you're expanding the loop, for example, the pumps are going to be in the CPU blocks and the graphics cards, and that will allow you to have enough uh, like fluid pressure in order to cycle everything through the loop. And they said they haven't really had any issues with adding stuff because every time you add like another graphics card, you get another pump in the mix. And then you just uh, connect everything up, and then you have a water-cooled graphics card and a full sort of almost custom, sort of semi-custom loop that you've arranged for yourself. So that is the QR family of products here from EVGA. Lots of options here. I think this is going to be a pretty cool uh, thing for folks who want to get into water cooling, but maybe don't want to do a completely custom loop. And they're looking at May, May time frame, uh, for the launch of the quick release product. So uh, actually pretty soon. So keep an eye out for these at a retail store near you. Finally, here's the EVGA SC17. This is a laptop that they're developing right now. It's supposed to come out soon, probably around June time frame, so uh, about the same time as the case that we already showed you. It's a very small laptop, uh, very, very thin and svelte, and it's got a nice black finish on it and everything. Uh, lots of hardware installed in here. You got a 7700HQ processor. You have a GTX 1060, full GPU. Uh, and Jacob has even told me that there are some overclocking capabilities built into this. I mean, of course, your overclocking capabilities are always slightly limited by the thermal uh, envelope that you have with a laptop form factor, but that's still pretty cool to be able to have. You also might notice that there's an RGB keyboard, um, because even though they didn't put RGB on their, uh, on their motherboards, they had to put it somewhere. Otherwise, they wouldn't let them into CES. The panel for this laptop is a 15 inch, of course, uh, that goes along with the name SC15. It's a 1080p uh, display, but it's 120 hertz IPS and it features G Sync support. So um, that's a pretty nice package altogether. Uh, I was asking about like pricing and stuff like that for this. Of course, it still weighs off, so they don't know for sure, but they said they're going to keep it competitive. And uh, Jacob even mentioned maybe like less than 2000, maybe even down towards 1500, but of course, that's all really early to say. But uh, Cool laptop. That's the SC15 from EVGA. So guys, that's it for my coverage here at the EVGA Suites at CES 2017. Big thanks to you guys for watching. Of course, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and uh, leave a comment down in the comment section below for EVGA because uh, again, they have quite a few products here that they're working on but are not, not yet available and they want some feedback from. Also, of course, a big thanks to my sponsor, uh, sponsors, Gigabyte Deep Cool as well as OC OCZ, a Toshiba company. And uh, we'll be back soon with more coverage from CES 2017. Bye now.